We can do this the easy way, hmm? or we can do it the hard way. Now, what's it gonna be? Got milk. Almost all of us have grown up drinking milk. We grew up learning that milk is a wholesome family product, an essential part of a balanced diet. At school, as we were taught the food pyramid, it was burned into our brains that milk equals calcium equals healthy bones. No matter what decade you grew up in, you were taught that milk was a health food. And remember all those milk commercials and milk slogans? They were everywhere telling us that if we want to be healthy and grow big and strong that we need milk. They were fun, celebrity filled and catchy. How could we not be encouraged to drink milk? For years we were all convinced that milk, quote, does the body good. But does it? Technically adults don't need milk to be healthy. We don't need milk after infancy. During infancy, we depend on milk to nourish our bodies until our digestive system strengthens and allows us to eat solid foods. Many vegetables such as spinach, kale, or broccoli have the same, if not more, calcium than milk. You may hate the way they taste, but it's there. And though milk is an easy and convenient way to get your calcium intake, as many as 70% of the world's population is dairy intolerant. But most of us have bought into this idea that if you don't drink milk, you're missing something. Milk has been marketed as a healthy product that most of us don't even really question. So if as adults we don't need to drink milk anymore, and if we can get the health benefits of milk from other foods, and if the majority of us can't really properly digest milk in the first place, why are we drinking so much of it and why have we been drinking it for so long? Let's find out. During World War I, the US government created a huge demand for canned and powdered milk to send to soldiers overseas to help fight malnutrition. When the war ended, demand decreased, but farmers had invested so much of their time and money into dairy production that it left America with a surplus of unwanted milk. The US government was forced to buy back all that unwanted milk, so what did they do with it? They pushed it to the public. As author and reporter Alyssa Hamilton stated, quote, the government decided, great, we'll create demand for milk by giving milk to our kids, and that way we'll have a demand for the fluid milk and we can make the processed products we need for our soldiers. After World War II, the US government, schools, and even doctors promoted milk as a nutritious drink, a necessary component of a healthy diet. By the 1950s, milk had assumed an important role in what people thought was a normal, nutritious lifestyle. In the US states back then, milk had been a family staple and enjoyed unending popularity as the beverage of choice for decades. It almost felt like to drink milk was to be an American, something of a patriotic duty to drink this stuff. And the more people drank, the more powerful the milk industry became. But by the 1970s, soda makers began aggressively marketing their beverages, helping to wear away milk's place in consumers' diets, essentially stealing milk's market share. People were drinking less milk, substituting soft drinks, at first in restaurants, then even when they were at home. As the 70s turned into the 80s and 90s, and soda continued its popularity along with bottled water and energy drinks, milk consumption was at an all-time low. And as drinking soda started to become cooler and hipper to consumers, drinking milk started to feel old-fashioned, dated, and dare we say, lame? Worried about losing their power in the beverage industry that they had enjoyed for decades, the milk industry fought back. But rather than continue promoting milk as something wholesome and for the family, they did something ingenious. They made milk cool. To be fair, it wasn't exactly the milk industry making milk cool, rather it was the ad agency they hired to do that. San Francisco ad agency Goodbye Silverstein and Partners are the ones that came up with that iconic slogan, Got Milk? Says Jeff Goodbye, co-chairman of the agency, quote, Milk is not a very high interest item in people's lives. It's a staple. We discovered there was a certain kind of irreplaceability to milk that I think is what made the campaign work. We did a focus group where a woman said, the only time I notice milk is when I run out of it. And that way of thinking about milk gave us the legendary Aaron Burr trivia question peanut butter mouth milk ad in 1993. It was funny, it was hip, and more importantly, it was relatable. Rather than selling milk as a compliment to certain foods, instead the strategy became to remind milk drinkers of the anxiety and disappointment that came when milk wasn't available at crucial moments. Goodbye says the campaign's simplicity gave it resonance. Quote, it's a truth, he says. Got milk is an acknowledgement that milk is essential, and if you don't have it, then something is missing. The Got Milk ad campaign was a massive success as the American public drank it up. Pun totally intended. In 1994, 
California's milk sales increased for the first time in over a decade to 755 million gallons from the previous year's 740 million. From 1994 to 1995, fluid milk sales totaled an astounding 23.3 billion pounds, and the milk industry increased their advertising expenditures to a massive $37.9 million. And just like that, milk and the Got Milk slogan were everywhere. More and more TV ads were created and shown ad nauseum. Billboards, bus stop ads, even posters in elementary school classrooms became the norm. The slogan was used in so many print ads that for most of the 90s and early 2000s, you couldn't open a magazine without seeing one. Celebrities from the worlds of sports, media, and entertainment were in the ads, all with that ubiquitous white mustache. Fictional characters such as The Simpsons and Batman even got in the game. Though still being touted as a health food, that was no longer necessarily the pull. What was important was that if famous people drank milk, then so should you. That Got Milk ad proved so popular that it even transcended milk. It became a pop culture phrase adopted by everyone and everything. Got Milk became a common phrase in everyday conversation. Kitchen and baby items with the Got Milk logo printed on it became popular as awareness of drinking milk increased by 90% during that time. Today the slogan is an international icon and the phrase has been parodied more than any other ad slogan. Again, none of this was a public service by the milk industry, getting the public healthier by drinking milk. All of these ads served one purpose, get people who drank milk to drink more of it. In fact, author and reporter Alyssa Hamilton argues that milk is not the healthy bone builder government and the dairy industry have led us to believe. Says Hamilton, quote, milk is the only food that makes up an entire food group. If you look at it logically, it doesn't deserve that special status any more than pumpkin seeds deserve that just because they're high in magnesium, which is an essential nutrient Americans are low in. Alyssa Hamilton also says that the milk industry knows milk isn't necessary in a modern adult diet, they just don't want to admit it. States Hamilton, quote, Even the dairy industry recognizes that milk is not essential to health. They can't counter that fact. Their comeback is that milk and milk products are the most convenient form of calcium. And this line of thinking, as Hamilton goes on to say, has, quote, created a crutch for people who don't think about getting calcium in places other than milk. But with that one slogan, the dairy industry has infiltrated our daily life. Today, the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Dietary Guidelines recommends three servings of dairy a day, despite the fact that one in four Americans can't digest milk. New evidence also shows that drinking lots of milk doesn't protect against bone fractures and actually may be linked to certain types of cancer. And all the good stuff in milk, calcium, potassium, and protein, can be found in greater amounts of foods like broccoli, kale, and even black beans, again, even if you hate the taste. Unfortunately, the milk industry doesn't really want you to know that, as it has gone to great pains over the decades to make sure you got milk. So if you can drink milk and want to drink milk, you do you. If you can't, there are lots of other alternative healthy options for you to get your calcium. And remember, there's always cheese. Cheese is good.